Welcome to The Luxury Code, where we decode the mindset, the marketing, and the business approach of successful luxury brokers. Hey, welcome back to Luxury Code. Today, I've got Monica Fabio, the of the Fab Property Group, a 20-year veteran of luxury real estate in Austin, Texas. Uh, Monica, welcome to the show. Thanks so much for having me. Exciting stuff. I've, I've yeah. always learned a lot from you, and I hope I can teach some now. Oh, well, I certainly appreciate it. I know just, you know, having, having sidebar conversations with you and then, you know, chopping it up with your coach, Jeff, he's like, she is a rock star. So, so <laughs> I've got really three or four questions that I want to unpack in this show today. Um, let's start with the first one. Like, what does it take in your opinion to sell luxury real estate in Austin and maybe kind of secondarily, like how has the luxury market changed in Austin in the last five years to a decade? The luxury, well, the luxury market in Austin and to be successful, it's extremely competitive. The last time I checked, I think there are about 14,000, probably 15,000 licensed agents. And at one point last year, I think there were about 900 listings. So you can do the math. Right. It's definitely, I would say the top five, maybe 10% doing the top 90 to 95% of the business. Uh, so very competitive. I think that uh, the main attributes that you need are a huge tenacity and patience and creativity because people may be selling and they don't quite know it yet kind of thing. If um, you, I, I don't personally door knock, but I can track down almost anybody. I've lived here a long time. And then we, of course, all have our ways of finding how to get a hold of someone. Sure. And uh yeah, so you've just really got you, you and you've got to network, not just with your inner sphere, but you're constantly looking for opportunities and you're constantly networking with the other luxury realtors. And it's like a dating game. You're trying to match a seller with a buyer because a lot of the sellers with the primo primo properties don't want to sell because where are they going to go? So it's interesting. So how do you how do you learn or teach tenacity or perseverance or you know, just the ability to follow through at the level that you and every other top luxury broker has to, because you don't like find a client, take a listing, make a sale on Tuesday. In many cases, it could be 18 months, two years, four years, five years, seven years of nurturing these relationships before they finally do something. So how do you learn that skill? I personally feel like I was just born with a very competitive, um, side to myself and it's really competitive with myself not mm -hmm. as much other people i've always just been a um fighter <laughs> through life and um have been very scrappy i've gone from one in industry to the next and because i'm also a huge uh, learner i am, am just hungry for knowledge in all different spheres um I just kind of uh, have been like that from day one, whether it was dance or piano or my education, even being a single mom. Um, and I'm just, I'm just scrappy. I may not look it, but I really am. <laughs> so it's interesting, Monica, I just did a survey of a hundred of our top clients and the number one attribute that they all came back with was uber competitive. It just, it was just something about, and, and some could argue that it was the growth mindset that they're, they're more willing to lean in to do whatever it takes, but it was that like competitive nature that they had from being a kid to now being in business. Um, but back to this whole tenacity thing, I'm, I'm curious, um, most mega luxury agents I know have like this insane memory. Like they just seem to remember everybody from seven years ago, two years ago, the house, the meeting. Is it the same for you or maybe more specifically, how do you follow up well? Because I'm a workaholic, I would say I'm a very, very hard worker and I do remember faces and I mm -hmm. do know a lot of people here. I think yes. that's been a huge uh, plus for me having gone to college here in Austin. I left, but I came back. Um, but even the relationships I've had in when I was in Dallas and Los Angeles and how you can connect with people that way too. Oh, wow, you're from LA. I used to live there. And anyway, I, um, uh, just, I, I've just known a lot of people and I may not remember their name and I'm ashamed of that, but because I'm a hard worker back on that, nurturing your database requires um, more than just the belly to belly conversations, which are the best ones. 
but everything's big numbers, big data. And to keep up in this competitive world of real estate we're in, you've just got to set up your systems. You've got to have your follow-up. And I try to get all those boxes checked uh, before I go to bed. Oftentimes it's 1.32 in the morning and I'll, you know, get up at 6.30 and start over. And um, I have to tell myself to take a break. But um, yeah, I guess my memory is pretty good, just not with names. And my work ethic then allows me to do more follow-up maybe than some others. Yeah. Love it. Love it. So let's, let's flip to uh, most expensive home you've ever sold. Tell, tell, or just tell us about a crazy deal. Oh, goodness. Um, well, one is I'm in the middle of right now. And while it is not uh, consummated, I know it's going to happen. Let's, let's uh, not jinx it, Monica. It. Yeah, let's not jinx hmm? it. Yes. Tell us. <laughs> well, uh, let's see. Because it's so crazy right now. It used to be that if there was a $6 million property in the MLS, that was just bonkers here in Austin. Uh, we, a couple of years ago, it, it made just huge news. It was, I think, a $38 million property. In fact, I had a client coming in. This was when, right when everything went crazy, flying in on a jet to come see this said property because it had just fallen out of contract. And the guy who was under contract had lost a couple million dollars in earnest money. And so we thought, great, well, let's check it out. He gets on the jet, has to basically turn around to deal with the work matter. And we thought, you know, it, it's a $38 million property. It'll be there next week. Oh no, but then I can't remember if it was two weeks or three weeks, closed, done, off the market. Yes, <laughs> um, yes. So it's it's pretty difficult. Um, there's a client, and just to give an example of Austin, because it's now the Bel Air, and right. people from different states are coming in, and it's like a candy land to them. And I had a, um, and then sellers, of course, get greedy in some cases, but yes. you have to really look at it. it. This isn't Bel Air. This isn't Jeff Bezos property in Seattle. I mean, it's beautiful, but come on, this is what you're asking. <laughs> it's like, yes. A, but um, I had a, a house that uh, a, a big client had decided, okay, finally, after a year and a half, two years of looking and it was the main house, but it had this house next to it that just we needed to get rid of basically. So we had to take that one down made an offer which you know this property's i really think six million on a good day i didn't even go in it but i'm pretty sure <laughs> um and we had offered a cash deal of 15 million wouldn't even counter waited decided okay we really want this other house so then offered 25 million cash to make it go away and they did not take the deal. And so I'm like, well, that's awesome. That was like a 60, $70 million deal that it took a long time to put together. Um, so it's uh, it's pretty interesting putting together portfolios now. You might find this great house, but people want the privacy. So then they wanna take down the house or the lot next to it or do tear it down. And it's just more complicated, um, yes. but the numbers are staggering. How have you, first of all, I mean, it's so interesting. I was uh, with a friend recently from Austin and he was like, yeah, we now live in like Los Angeles, <laughs> right? Like, like it's just Austin, LA, Austin, San Francisco. Um, how has that altered your marketing? I'm just curious. I mean, I know, you know, you're in our network, you know, your brokerages network. I, I imagine agent agent referrals are a big deal, but what else have you done to, to sort of market yourself as the go-to person for, you know, the luxury clientele coming to the area? We do lots of things. I do nurture my relationships with agents and all these groups I'm in. Um, some of them that are national groups, including Tom Ferry yes. <laughs> from training. Um, but we network a lot with the California, the New York, where a lot of our traffic's coming from, you know, Chicago, yes. Florida, and then even within Texas, there's quite a bit of traffic. So to me, print advertising is we still do it. We uh, will continue to do it, but it's really more of a listing tool. And we then will show stats on more targeted marketing via videos and social media. And um, then also blast various agents in various cities because um, we've built up databases and friendships. So 
And then in terms of just being, you know, the fab property group, we want everyone to have a fab experience. So we try to go that little extra mile, the, the tipping point book, yeah. where uh, we have a, a fab faves map that's a really nice bound thing. And then we put it on the website and we really, really want to become friends and family with anyone and everyone. I love meeting new people. It's the most fun part of our job, 99.9% .9 yes. of the time. And they, you know, I tell them you're stuck with me. And uh, by the way, here are all the music venues and, you know, come with us to this concert and um, go golf with my boyfriend because I'm horrible. <laughs> and so we just try to give a fab experience, like a concierge yes. level of service where we're really in it with them, whether it be hotels, events, all the vendors we can refer them to. So, Well, it's so cool that you do all that and you do it in like high volume, like 63 closed transactions last year. So that's a lot of friends, a lot of venues, a lot of golf with your boyfriend. Um, so, you know, just thinking about how you keep all that together. This is the time where the very best separate themselves from the rest and drive their business to the next level. This is exactly what we teach at Blueprint. It is the playbook for top agents, for people like yourself that are looking to elevate themselves out of this market and take control. It's gonna be myself and a bunch of top coaches and a bunch of top clients revealing their best practices so you can plug and play and grow your business. Just go to tomferry.com slash blueprint and enter the promo code blueprint15 to get 15% off your ticket price. I can't wait to see you there. But I wanna, I wanna switch gears one of the questions I love asking people like yourself is when you look back over your career, what were the iconic moves that you made that made you who you are today in business? What were some of those moments, those decisions, those actions that you took that propelled you to this moment? Well, I think the first action is even if you're starting day one is to just live and breathe what you want to be and the, you know, perceptions reality. So I knew I wanted to be a luxury agent. Of course, you've got to get a little bit of experience under your belt and um, have people trust you and know that you can do it. But for me, after a couple of years of, I just really drove into training. I was asked to join Capital City Sotheby's when they first came to Austin in 2006. Yeah. And not only was I invited to go and uh, be a luxury agent there, because I started having some success in that in that area, but I got to be a financial partner. So on my business card, not only was it Sotheby's new to Austin, very luxurious, but it said, uh, you know, partner. And I think people just really, that was a huge plus to my, not just level of experience, just my, my whole reputation. And then I, I kept that reputation by doing the right thing and working hard for people and fighting for them. And it just snowballs from there. I think luxury is one of those things. You've just got to, every opportunity you have to show, and it's not about showing off, but it's just like, look, you know, what we can do, what we do, look at our marketing, marketing, it's all high quality. And yes, we have the connections and we're out there, we're finding properties that aren't on the market and um, you're really in the know. Yeah. But you have yeah. to pretend first, right? <laughs> Until. It's, you know, it's so interesting that everyone I interview says, says something similar. Like in the beginning, you have to decide to make that decision. Like I'm going into luxury. This is what I'm going to do. And I'm going to figure it out. I'm going to learn the product, the people, you know, the lifestyle, the language, everything that's like just slightly different. And then once you have it, you're kind of in the club, if you will. And then it does take you know, like the one thing you have work ethic, hustle, grind, right? Determination. And, and, you know, you clearly show that, but now here you are 20 years later, when you look back, was there anything over the last few years, a decision that you made a marketing piece that you put out something that just gave you an extra splash could have even been an iconic listing. I, I think, um, I think it would be, a listing um, for me, a couple of exact, I, I can't really, you're, we're all, all of us are under NDAs, you know, it's, just, yes, it's like, yes. oh, what can you say? What can you not say yeah. anymore? <laughs> Let's just say but it's a really I big just, house. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I think, you know, when you have a listing, you're going to communicate with buyers and then hopefully you get to represent some of those buyers. And I was really fortunate in the last three years to capture some great buyers out of 
different states. And if you do a good job for them, it just the referrals start coming and you've just got to really pay attention to all those relationships. And it's not just the, uh, some of my biggest referrals came from very innocuous places. It could be right. somebody who worked for someone or, you know, the assistant at some CPA's office and know something about a, you know, a client they're friends with. And so you just treat everybody nicely in, in the sandbox. And that's including your fellow realtors. That's so important that um, you be, you're, you know, should be collaborative. So, and I know some of us, it seems like it could be competitive and I'm sure once in a while I have a little streak cause I am competitive, but I'm truly competitive against myself. And, yes. and I, you know, I was a one person sports person, even ballet versus tennis. I would have felt like I was disappointing my partner. <laughs> so right. I compete against myself. I love it. I love it. So last question, what are the biggest challenges you're facing today and how are you overcoming them? Well, there are a couple of challenges. Um, one is I, I mentioned is the lack of inventory and how do you get around that? How do you get a seller to sell when you can't find them something on the other side necessarily, or it's not easy to. Yeah. Um, and we've had so many multiple offers. If you're representing buyers, it, it can be, you, it can get very, you're weary and they're weary, but the market always comes out as it should. And I think once they're worn out, maybe three offers in, they start to listen to you a little more and right. either change the price point down or spend more money. Um, and I think the other challenge really, it's, it's been so fast for so long here. I think all of us who are doing a lot of business, it's just to take care of yourself. Uh, I think there's a lot of burnout right now. I know we're all super fortunate and extremely thankful. You have to make hay while the sun shines. And I, I completely get that. But I just literally for uh, Easter weekend went to the beach. And for the first time, I, I didn't check out completely, but I just really needed it. And um, I came back. And I mean, I'm already back in it, but at least I felt a little more creative and, and refreshed. And so I think we all have to remember to do that because if you're a workaholic, you just never stop. And then you start losing that drive and that creativity. Yeah. I think you can appreciate, um, especially on that last point as I'm, you know, I get to talk to so many people around the world and I ask, I always ask one question, which one do you need more of time or deals? I'd be curious for you, which one time or deals? That's so tough. Don't say both. <laughs> I know. I know it's different. I'm like, I'm doing double this year. <laughs> yes. uh, well, I think, you know, I always have to question, why are you doing all this? Mm -hmm. Like, what's the point if you can't enjoy the fruits of your labor? And yes. um, none of us are promised the next day. So I'm going to Croatia for 16 days in June. <laughs> Congratulations. Congrats. So it sounds like time is the answer, even though everybody wants both. If you could only have one, I find that the busiest agents all say, I just want a little more time, right? Time to breathe, time to relax, a little self-care, a little time with my, you know, boyfriend, girlfriend, husband, wife, yada, yada, yada. Because once you've got the deal machine going, the deal machine's going. Mm -hmm. And I see that clearly yeah, with you. Yeah, true. Yeah. There are a few clients who really just want you, but you try to train them way ahead of time yes. because we all deserve some sort of a life, but I think really we probably think we're a little more vital um, than we may be for deals to happen. And yeah. I've found anytime I have gone on vacation, I'm usually getting on a plane and I get about five referrals. So if you want more business, you go on vacation. And the last time I took a vacation was uh, a long one was last, I went to Costa Rica last summer. I was literally in the rainforest on a bridge tour with maybe yeah. eight people. Dallas person looking in Austin in the neighborhood, one of them where I specialize. So wow. in the rainforest on a bridge, I got a referral and then walking down the path at the resort where we were staying, there was another California. Well, they were, everybody's moving to Austin, but I'm yeah. thinking you can still do deals when you're on a bridge in Costa Rica. That's it. It is. It's funny. Like, I mean, as a veteran, you know, like the old, like in the old days when listings didn't sell in 14 seconds or 14 days, the old joke was if you have a bunch of stale listings, what should you do? Book first class tickets, non-refundable, get a hotel room, get on the plane. And the second you do, offers start coming in, right? It's instantaneous. Oh, yeah. 
Love yeah, it. so June will be my best month. <laughs> right, I know. I'm excited for you. So doubling your business this year, lots of good stuff covered on this uh, on this session, Monica. So if somebody wanted to reach out and they wanted to find you, what's the best way? Is it on Instagram? Is it you know via email? Go to your website. If somebody's got more questions about Austin and they just want to chat with you about high end real estate, how do they reach you? Yeah, the uh, Monica at the Fab Property Group dot com. Our Instagram handle is the same at the Fab Property Group dot com. And surprise, the website is the Fab the Fab yes. Property Group dot com. <laughs> love it, love it. Good branding. All right, well, Monica, thank you so much for your time today, and for everybody out there watching and listening. Make sure you follow her, and if you got questions, you can ping her there. You can certainly leave it in the comments here. Um, as always, we appreciate you and all that you do. I'll look forward to seeing you at an event soon. I'll say hi to Jeff, your super coach, coming up. Big shout out to Jeff Mays, Monica. Thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you so much. We'll hopefully see you in Anaheim for a all day, right. anyway. Yeah. All right. I'll see you soon. Take care. <laughs>